Oh, now here. it's working. Okay, so. here we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome to day two. Hope you are all having fun and learning at the KGF 2023. Thank you for joining today's keynote. I'm delighted to have you all here. My name is Sumit, and I am the Strategic Technology Director here at Autotext, an ex-Gartner analyst in the space of data management and analytics. And in the past, I have worked as a software developer at Microsoft in their core SQL Server replication engine, as well as at Oracle in their OLAP kernel engine. I've also published a book and developed an online course about five years back. So let's get started. And I'd like to welcome you to the buffet, the data buffet. This picture is from Matt Turk's MAD landscape. It's called MAD because it encompasses tools, frameworks, libraries in the machine learning, AI, and the data space. And this picture itself is indeed maddening. It has about, believe it or not, it has about 1,400 logos. And when it started in 2012, it had about 110, 100. 30 kind of logos. Data ecosystem today is crowded with shiny objects and dazzling buzzwords, all fighting for investment dollars. In 2021, there was a survey done and they found out that in that time, a company, a data company was being funded every 45 minutes. So data ecosystems today have indeed become data jungles and data teams are grappling to create a modern data experience in this disaggregated, disparate ecosystem. They are struggling to control the entropy. To me, this looks almost like a catastrophe, or should I call it datastrophe? Now, data can be your can be an organization's best friend if it's worked upon correctly, it's managed correctly, it can turn, it, this asset can turn into gold if things are done correctly into actionable insights and can build and can bring in actionable insights. At the other end of the spectrum, it can also become the uranium, where if you don't manage and secure and protect it, data breaches can cause massive damages to your data organization. In fact, a, a data breach happens every six hours, believe it or not. Most of us don't care or don't hear about it. That is the state of affairs in today's data ecosystem. We've heard this term, data, data everywhere, not a drop of insight. We've also heard about big data, white data, and so on. However, no one talks about how, as more and more data accumulates, the context associated with the data can quickly get diluted and lost if it's not managed well. We have a plethora of data tools, we have a plethora of data, but still organizations are struggling to build insights. Look at this DIKW pyramid. Most organizations stop at the information layer and they cannot make that leap to that knowledge or the wisdom layer where data really turns into gold. And this is a huge chasm to cross. There are multiple reasons for this. One of the reasons what we see and what we classify, we call it as the bad data tax. Bad data tax is rampant in most organizations. This is evident and this only, these statistics, these numbers only paint a partial picture. We all have heard about organizations chasing Gen AI, machine learning. Yes, that needs to be done to stay competitive, but hardly we see organizations talking about data quality, talking about semantics. Today, data quality is losing to data quantity, in resulting in what I call as infobicity. Look at some of these numbers here. These are these numbers are really, really paint a sad state of affairs in terms of how organizations, in spite of spending millions and, and billions of dollars in their data ecosystems, they are not achieving what they should be with their, with their data sources. This is an old quote from Sir Tim Berners-Lee. 
but it's still very relevant for most organizations even today. Organizations not only need to connect the dots across data silos, but they need to connect it semantically to harness the power of data and turn it into the gold. And sadly, most organizations are still failing in that aspect and ignoring the basics around data quality and semantics. This mind map shows a lot of the pain points in most mid to big sized organizations. In such organizations, data teams do not know what data exists across the organizations. They do not have a data map, neither do, have a, neither do they have a data asset inventory. Data is not, even if, it, if they know it, data is sometimes not accessible to the knowledge teams to, to build their business use cases. There is rampant data duplication across business silos. And a lot of organizations don't have a functional process to prevent duplication. They can't link the data across these different systems to an integrated view. They are unable to identify and eliminate some of these data dependencies. A lot of them do manual reconciliations as backfills and new data comes in. And a lot of times it results in massive downstream challenges and errors in their reports. And we can go on and on with this. Take a look at this quote from Gartner, which echoes the same sentiments. The data that is siloed cannot be effectively and efficiently connected to make sense and to build insights. Pay more attention to the second part of that, second part of it, right? Where it talks about semantics, the context and data integration. Most organizations are turning a blind eye to the semantic aspects, to the contextual aspects of data in a race to chase shiny technologies with the hope that it will solve their data problems without addressing core systemic problems. Now let's introspect and ask ourselves these simple questions. Why do most data lakes fail? A lot of organizations, reason, reason, a lot of organizations take the data lake as cheap storage with the idea, let's bring in all the data, make copies of it in one consolidated place, and then we will figure out what to do with it. Again, mid to big sized organizations have multiple data catalogs across multiple data vendors, some heavyweight, some lightweight and none of them are helping to connect the data. Why? Because they all lack the semantics associated. Each data in these data catalogs are again siloed and disconnected. McKinsey did a, a survey a few years back and they came up with a number saying, in most organizations, 30% of the time is spent by teams to find the data. Findability, is a big challenge and we all know it. Even we struggle to manage our own data, whether it's hiding in our laptops, whether it's hiding in the cloud somewhere and it's very difficult to find it. Data can be the differentiator, but technology today is not the differentiator. It's almost table stakes, it's almost commodity. But data, but for data to make, to be a differentiator, it needs to be semantically aware to build that competitive advantage. Now, what are the reasons in spite of organizations bringing in skilled people, bringing in expensive technologies, why are they still struggling? There are two major reasons in my opinion. They are taking a very myopic view of their data ecosystems. They still think of transactional and analytical systems as isolated and decoupled. And of course, lack of semantics across their data ecosystems has caused most organizations to lose consistency and precision of meaning across the data. In my opinion, data silos are not the problem. The problem is the disconnect that these data silos are, cross, are causing. And as data proliferates across these silos, it takes on a different meaning, a different interpretation 
causing ambiguity and lack of trust, causing enormous non-ending downstream challenges as business teams are trying to mine that data and turn it into the gold. So enough talk about the challenges and the problems. Let's now understand how knowledge graphs can help. So how do you solve these things? Knowledge graphs are the key to semantics and context to bring, to make, to turn that data into a contextually aware system. Knowledge graphs help to integrate these variety of heterogeneous data across these data systems. With knowledge graphs, organizations can model the knowledge that is in the data as graphs. And these knowledge graphs can take a much better conceptual understanding and aggregation of the data. This is the bridge. Knowledge graph, in my opinion, is the bridge that can help you to cross that chasm we saw between in the DIKW pyramid. Knowledge graphs have these fundamental capabilities like identity resolution with unique IDs assigned to concepts. They also have ontologies that provide meaning with that provide meaning resolution and a shared understanding of business and domain concepts with triples in the RDF form that provide basic semantic structure like sub with subjects, objects and linking them with predicates. And this ensures that these concepts are defined and understood at a very granular level. Again, with knowledge graphs, with business rules encoded as shackles, they provide a contextual and conditional expression linked to the ontologies to ensure that the data is validated both at an instance Elvis, as well as at a structural level. Knowledge graphs serve as a semantic metadata hub. And this makes the data deeply interlinked as well as contextualized. In today's ecosystem, just plain metadata will not do it. We need to associate semantics to the, meta to the metadata. For example, we see here a product data tag. A product data tag is a good example of basic metadata. However, most product tags have barcodes which have numbers and symbols associated with them, which are unknown until you connect them to external data sources, to reference data, to look, to look up, and thus link it to make it more machine readable and make it more contextually aware. So with semantic metadata, it, semantic metadata sort of opens the door to interconnect data meaningfully, forging new experiences for data exploration and discovery, enriching entities, avoiding ambiguity, improving findability in your digital resources. Now, over the last few years, we have heard about these two approaches, the new approaches of data fabric and data mesh. Let us not get into the definitions, but let's see how they address the problems that we discussed. At Gartner, we used to be always asked these questions from the customers. Do I need a data fabric or do I need a data mesh? And this was a wrong question in my humble opinion. These are not competing technologies. Rather, they are complementing each other with a symbiotic relationship where they help to localize responsibility for data at the business usage, at the business domain level without going through centralization methods and thus help and create reusable data products across the organization. While data mesh takes a bottom-up approach, data fabric takes a more top-down approach. And this coalescence of data fabric and data mesh is powered by semantic knowledge graphs. That is again the bridge between the data fabric and the data mesh to yield better insights into the data. This can lead to reduction in the amount of ETL, data moving, data copying, eliminating redundancies. Now the problem for most organizations is stitching data from disparate data sources in a coherent and a useful manner. The fundamental task of linking, consolidating, and meaningfully describing the data is what Data Fabric aims to solve by combining several management data management techniques, 
like data integration, data orchestration, creating the data pipelines, semantically driven pipelines with a, with a semantic data catalog, and of course, automation. The goal then for Data Fabric is to provide a consolidated user experience and access to this data so that organizations and different data teams can manage their data regardless of the form or the location where the data is stored. It thus removes friction and mitigates the cost because you're not, not making copies of the data and paying for storage cost or data movement cost. And data fabric doesn't involve any centralization into like a data lake or a data warehouse. On the contrary, it requires sourcing the data from their respective places by implementing SLAs for, from each of the business units. It thus devolves or delegates the responsibilities for data sets closer to where data is actually produced and utilizes it utilizes machine learning and AI algorithms for creating a semantic approach to accessing this data. Again, look at this quote from Gartner on the value of metadata within the data fabric. A data fabric is entirely driven by the metadata. In my opinion, more contextually aware metadata. Though I feel these numbers are aggressive and I feel it's probably going to take longer for most organizations to really leverage the power of, of metadata here. Now, again, look at this diagram from Gartner on and especially see how strategically knowledge graphs are positioned here at the center of all the data fabric stack as one of the main pillars of data fabric. And this is the key to implementing data fabric to understand the context of your data. And there are several characteristics for knowledge graphs that make it possible. The formal semantics of the RDF stack the use of ontology allows data and metadata of different types to be represented in knowledge graphs in such a way that they can be analyzed and interpreted together. With domain knowledge encoded in ontologies and the inherent connectivity that knowledge graphs provide, metadata gets the context so that machines can comprehend and manipulate the data. And that is where that automation aspect the augmented data catalog aspect of a data fabric comes in. Data fabric powered by knowledge graphs translate these disparate eco data systems into a useful organizational knowledge by correlating data and metadata together. And as data changes, the metadata also gets updated automatically. So with knowledge graphs in a data fabric, it simplifies the complexities of data ingestion, access, and storage. And data fabric, as you will realize, is all about data integration and data federation. And I call it more semantic data integration because we know data integration is probably the biggest chunk of vendors we saw in that first PDF from Matt Turk. But data integration, there are so many data integration tools, but until you do semantic data integration, organizations will still run into challenges with data integration. Now coming to the last part around data mesh, we have all heard the noise about data mesh. Data mesh is a fresh concept to emerge, in my opinion, in the data world in the last about 10, 12 years. It's not a pure technical or a technological or an architectural approach to solving some of the other problems, but it very wisely marries organizational patterns combined with technology and architectural approaches. One of the major things that I like about data mesh is it does not differentiate between an analytical and a an transactional system. It treats them as decentralized, unlike lake houses and the cloud data warehouses, which are mostly on the analytical side where you again have to bring in the data. Data mesh is, is different. It promotes this data autonomy and enables users in, to make these domain related decisions without relying on a centralized 
data engineering team or a centralized IT team to provide access to the data. And this is, has been a common obstacle we have seen with most organizations. Data Mesh thus distributes the data ownership and data responsibilities and reduces dependencies across these services, which different teams have to use, which different cross-functional teams have to use, and thus eliminates these bottlenecks to deliver value. Now, this is a high-level picture of how a data mesh looks like. This is a sort of a busy, noisy diagram, but look closely here. We have centralized services, a lot of which are powering things like data sharing, data catalogs. There are two sets of data catalogs here. And again, they're all logical. They are not physical. There are these enterprise data catalogs. And then each node, each domain that is building its data products has its own localized data catalog, which has domain specific information, domain specific semantics of the data that they are working on. <clears throat> The next part of the data mesh is about data products. This is one of the core concepts of data mesh. And each of these domains that we saw in the previous picture are building data products. And a data product on the node or on the mesh encapsulates, encapsulates code, data, infrastructure, as well as metadata. And these data products are curated and created and are offered to the users, to the consumers as self-service, providing a dependable, trustworthy source. I would rather call this again, semantic data products, because you see this thing here called data contracts. Data contracts are a contract between the producers and the consumers. These contracts ensure you have the right kind of SLAs as data flows between one organization to the other or from one business unit to the other unambiguously, consistently. The primary objective of data contract is to establish this transparency in terms of from a data usage and dependencies while also outlining the terms of service and SLAs. Implementing data contracts though requires a culture shift in terms of how data teams have been working all this while. And knowledge graphs, again, with the capabilities of doing data validation can ensure that these data contracts are standardized, they are uniform, they are consistent, semantically correct, and well aligned. The data sharing part that we saw, which is where the different domains in the data mesh share their data, they also are powered by knowledge graphs through these data contracts, which, facil which facilitates reliability, trustworthy data across these different business units. Finally, the last few slides, the integration of knowledge graphs with data mesh can lead to emergence of what I called as semantic data mesh, which provides data across different business units within an organization with context and with meaning. And this promotes data discoverability, interoperability, augmentation, enrichment. And of course, as organizations are doing ML and AI, it also provides the explainability aspects of AI and machine learning. Knowledge graphs can help to automate metadata extraction in data fabrics, generation and inform and enforcement of data quality. It also ensures that these data contracts that we saw are sort of uniform, consistent, semantically correct, and well aligned. So the key takeaways from this is knowledge graphs help to unite data fabric and data mesh. But again, if, if, you, if you do data mesh and data fabric without Thinking about the semantic aspects of it, in my opinion, it will fail. Data fabric and data mesh are evolutionary architectures, which are still work in progress. Data management is really not about just managing data. In my opinion, data management is about managing data with a context to make it usable. It is about managing the knowledge that is inherent within 
the different business units and departments of an organization. And this knowledge is putting information from data to a more conceptual model with domain ontologies to reason and make sure that data makes sense that can help you to cross that chasm from information to knowledge. Thank you very much for joining. And if you have questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them now or any time later. Thank you. Summit, it looks like we have from Pamela so far. How does one determine authorized access in a data mesh? Yeah, that's a good question. And again, authorization in a data mesh needs to be, again, decentralized, both at the data, at the domain level, as well as at the centralized level. Now, though data mesh talks about decentralization, there is a centralized set of services which are built by centralized teams, but they provide only the basic self-service capabilities so that these data domains do not have to do the full stack implementation. And it is these teams that need to use the right kind of role-based access controls or attribute-based access controls to provide a self-service way for these domain teams to access the data. They need to consult with these domain experts. Who, what are the data sets? Who is able to access it? What are the roles that, that can access certain fields or certain roles and things like that? So it's decentralized, but it also needs cooperation, coordination, and collaboration across the centralized teams with the domain-specific teams. Hope that answers your question. Great, and it looks like we have another question. How will the semantics be developed, curated, and managed? Yeah, semantic, creating the semantics, developing them, managing them, maintaining them, creating them, curating them requires a couple of things. First, it requires help from the technology side in terms of technologies, whether it's you're using ontologies, whether you're using taxonomies, vocabularies, glossaries. And on the other side, it needs help from the technology to provide you, sorry, it needs help from the domain specific aspects where you need domain experts who know the domain rules, the domain, who understand the domain data well. And it is again, that collaboration that can help you to bring the semantic aspects into your organizational data with the help of knowledge graphs, with the help of graphs. All right, I think we may have time for one more, if, <laughs> Summit, if you can speed through it. What is the linkage from knowledge graphs to large language model semantics? Yeah, and that's a, that's a question that probably needs a, needs a longer time and longer answer, but LL, LLMs probably are very useful today, especially with knowledge graphs, because it has been always been a challenge to create knowledge graphs. And LLMs can help in that process of building knowledge graphs. But LLMs by themselves have very small context or semantic understanding. And it is there where knowledge graphs can help to add on to the semantic aspects of LLMs. And that's why we see there is a big synergy between LLMs and knowledge graphs. And I would highly recommend you to take a look at some of the web at the webinar we did a few months back in explaining the interrelationships between knowledge graphs and LLMs. Great. Thank you so much, Summit. And there was another question, but we don't have any more time. Unfortunately, we have to move to the next session, but thank you all for your questions and please bring that to our exhibitor booth and we'll be able to answer that. Thanks so much. Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah.